And I'm going to admit our speakers. Are you ready, um, ready, Sukhinda? Oh, I'm ready. Fantastic. Great. Here we go. Can you language to end the introduction? Not the system. Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you all. Good afternoon. Um, and great to have you all back together again. Um, I'm going to hand straight over to our chair for today's session, Mr. Sukhvinder Singh from Chandigarh in India. Um, Mr. Singh, please um, please take the floor. Uh, as uh, we are uh, from different zones, so good morning to all and good afternoon to all. Uh, I'm Sukhvinder Singh in charge of Food Safety Administration, uh, city of Chandigarh, India. I'm also a nodal officer and a licensing person uh, uh, with smart cities. Uh, I welcome you all uh, to today's session. It's a great opportunity to, uh, to shake us the best practices and to learn from best practices being followed in other parts of the uh, cities globally. Uh, the city Chandigarh is among top 11 smart cities uh, from India selected under the Milan Urban Food Pact uh, policy. Uh, today's workshop uh, centered around the how we can make our cities to make healthier food choices, and what are the effective methodologies uh, we can adopt to change the behavior and the mindset. Uh, today we have a presenter, I mean, a speakers uh, from uh, various cities who will share their experience and work. Uh, in the end, we will take up the uh, question and uh, raise during the session. So as we know that there is an increase in the cases of uh, diseases like obesity, uh, diabetes, uh, hypertension, etc., globally, uh, which is uh, which clearly indicates that uh, societies are societies are facing major challenges uh, to improve the health and well-being of their citizens. So we have to adopt methodology uh, to change the people behavior in a beneficial directions, like eat healthy, uh, uh, waste less food, uh, etc. So it's important to adopt healthier food choices. Uh, to reduce the growth of non-communicable diseases and also to motivate uh, consumers and peoples to live healthy, sustainable life in today's environment. So not taking much uh, time, I would like to first call upon uh, Dr. Ashish Nair uh, from the city of uh, Surat, India to present and share their experience. Uh, uh, Dr. Ashish is presently working as a Deputy Commissioner uh, of Health and Hospital and at Surat and also having a charge of designated officer of city of Surat. Uh, sir did his M MBBS in the year 1995 and served on various important projects uh, during his tenure. Uh, during his tenure, being a nodal officer of uh, Swat Bharat Mission, uh, Surat city uh, ranked second cleanest city uh, in the India. Dr. Ashish played a major role in epidemic control during the COVID-19 pandemic. And during his tenure as a designated officer, he implemented various eat right initiatives in city. Uh, the city of Surat is among top 11 finalists being performing Smart City of India. So now I hand it over to uh, the platform to Dr. Ashish Nayak 
to present his presentation and share his experiences. Uh, over to Dr. Ashish. Good afternoon, all, uh, and good morning to the people joining from abroad. Uh, thank you, Sukhinderji. Uh, I am Dr. Ashish Nayak, Deputy Commissioner, Health and Hospital. Next. Uh, Surat, uh, as you know, it is a uh, seven. Uh, it is having a seven million population in the city. Surat is known as textile city, diamond city, and it is uh, the first uh, smart city of the uh, India and the second cleanest city of the India. It uh, we are also famous for our food habits. Next, it is eighth largest uh, city in India as per the population, fourth uh, fastest growing city globally. Termed as economic capital of Gujarat, and nine out of ten diamonds of the world are cut and polished here. So we are known as a diamond city. Uh, Forty percent of the national total man-made fabric and twenty-five percent of the nation total man-made fabrics uh, belongs to Surat. Uh, this uh, economic uh, capital of the Surat does uh, bring a lot of uh, challenges to us in a form of uh, migration. We have a migration from all the uh, states of uh, India. And uh, that uh, creates a bigger challenge as far as the food habits and uh, food hygiene is concerned. So, uh, as far as uh, eat, I, uh, re eat right uh, issues are concerned, we have challenges and variables. First, we have to identify the and combating multidimensional challenge to meet various uh, requirement of uh, around seven million people population. Designing development uh, of a roadmap to uh, make the people. Uh, and ensure them a uh, safe food. Exactly in the same way, identifying the vulnerable group, as I said, there is a maximum migration. We are the probably the first city in the India which shows the maximum migration from all over the corners of uh, all the corners from the uh, India. So multi-discipline people are coming here. Uh, that creates that here we a good job opportunity to them, but uh, that creates a public health issues with uh, city also. So we have to cater their their issues also. Uh, educating the citizen for their responsibility to control factors responsible for climate change also. And as there is a number of people uh, coming from the uh, different states, we have to run our programs in multilinguistics model. So we do have our different centers running in a different languages also. Uh, our aim is to build a city for the people, a city that is more livable, resilient and sustainable. This requires a resilient and sustainable food system that can provide safe, healthy and nutritious food to its citizens. The roadmap to this vision entails the development of institutional, physical, social, political will and commitment. As I said, the basic uh, for uh, roadmap for the four pillars for the roadmap that is institutional infrastructure requires a policy making and uh, we do have uh, different uh, agency uh, committees formed uh, for uh, this political commitment also we have we are urban local bodies so uh, health committee uh, do take place uh, regularly and that makes a policy that has been implemented uh, through uh, various departments from the Surat Municipal Corporation area. We have uh, physical infrastructure in place. Uh, basically, if we, uh, we are the city, we are having the highest uh, food supply. And uh, we have a state-of-art uh, public health laboratory, which uh, tastes all the samples, which has been sent by the food safety officers. Citizen engagement, uh, as this is the topic of the today's discussion, and uh, we know that citizen engagement forms the bedrock of all the four pillars. And uh, citizen engagement is necessary to get uh, success in each of these uh, schemes, if we can say, where, because uh, if either if we talk uh, in form of uh, food or in a form of public health or even Swachh Bharat Mission, citizen engagement becomes the important pillar to uh, have a success in any city's uh, it is success history. Uh, so basically, Surat City achieves citizen engagement through adoption of innovative measures like leveraging uh, technology for direct engagement, use of social media, institutional approach, and health system integrations. Next. Uh, we have a separate department, which in uh, coordination with the health department and the food safety department, uh, 
it it all the social platforms social media platforms are being used by this uh, department that is a uh, public relation officer is specially designated for uh, communicating with the general public and uh, all the messengers facebook and all the social platforms are being used to send messages relevant to the food safety and uh, habits of the foods next uh, in association with uh, different uh, food uh, food uh, fbos and uh, other organizations we conduct camps to educate the people we do carry out uh, awareness camps uh, in the uh, schools and colleges also at the same time a pandemic has also taught a lesson in a way that uh, during pandemic there was a maximum citizen engagement that we, what we have uh, found and that platform is also used to uh, engage the citizen in a way that uh, during the last two years we have formed uh, swachh suraksha committees uh, in all the commercial uh, outlets and even in the residential societies so that platform is also being used for to engage the citizens in the various public health department activities as i said uh, we are using our technologies also to get uh, engaged with the people at the same time we are trying to get a feedback from the people also that uh, whether they are uh, getting quality food or not in that uh, for that reason only we have generated our own app uh, we are uh, we have sent and we have installed a qr codes in all the restaurants and in the public uh, eateries from where the people can directly send their feedbacks and uh, that feedbacks are being analyzed uh, at a high uh, at our uh, isd department and on based on this analysis uh, corrective measures are being taken so 24 into 7 uh, grievance redressal is also in place to cater all the grievances that has been taken place either through this feedback system or through our online system institutional framework for citizen engagement surat city has as i said we have a dedicated uh, food department with uh, 27 food safety officers that is highest in the gujarat we have a 7000 square feet uh, food testing laboratory uh, and also food safety on wheels which is a mobile laboratory uh, which not only test uh, they give the test results instantly but it also been occupied to get, engage the people to uh, to aware to make an awareness in the people in the streets regarding uh, healthy foods Uh, and uh, adulteration of the food if it all it all taking place so in the institutional approach is basically we have approached uh, the teaching institutes for first so in most of the schools of the surat uh, surat corporation area they have the diet plans they have the dietitians so from the beginning of the or we can say during schooling also the students are being uh, Uh, asked to, to learn what is healthy food, what they should eat, what they should avoid. So that practice is being taking taken place in all the almost all the private schools. Uh, in government setups, uh, Akshay Patra is giving the midday meal, and uh, in uh, less than five years, the through Anganwadi and Asa network, we are providing them uh, sub uh, meal. So. Uh, we are basically focusing more on uh, children age group basically adolescent and the adult age group uh, we do have uh, various associations of uh, doctors uh, uh, which uh, john wise we are doing uh, camps as well as awareness programs through the doctors association uh, as supinder singh ji said that uh, diabetes and hypertension is now uh, becoming Uh, prevalent in a younger age group so uh, doctors are uh, be required to be involved in this program so that people will not understand the importance of the uh, healthy diet or the healthy habits that is to be catered throughout the life so educational institutes have been uh, engaged for these programs their teachers are educated uh, through our programs our uh, ward wise and zone wise programs we are doing with the teachers and the college students a surveillance drive is uh, being taken place by the food safety officers in addition to the routine surveillance samples that are being taken we do carry uh, regular surveys in uh, re religious places also uh, at the same time we do take samples from the schools and colleges also so uh, through this uh, we are trying that uh, safe food is been provided to the citizen of uh, surat 
at the same time uh, we are engaged with some ngos who are uh, basically involved in uh, serving the food to the needy people especially to people uh, lying lie, lying on the streets uh, and the uh, uh, vulnerable people also so sai roti ram roti kind of ngos are there we are, which are running their ngos and they are providing food to the needy people at the same time there is a few ngos we which uh, takes uh, help from the restaurants and uh, provide to the homeless people uh, we do carry out uh, food fairs in uh, different seasons to uh, away make aware the people drawing competitions and other activities are also being uh, do, done in uh, all the schools and even in the uh, societies areas also so we try to engage the people uh, and uh, to make them aware about what to eat what not to eat and uh, the entire system is basically involved for that interdepartment and integration is also being done next Matt, please pass uh this is not only the activity of the health department uh, other departments need to join hand to hand with the health department to make the people aware so the uh, health department uh, through the network of asa and icds as i said uh, adolescent age group uh, anc mothers pnc mothers and their food and their uh, nutrition is being taken uh, cared by this uh, health department activities education department school board we have uh, our own school board uh, surat municipal corporation runs our own municipal school boards and uh, through the help of this these school boards we provide uh, health education and food related education to the students of the vulnerable age group uh, and as i said we run our own uh, pro department to engage the citizens uh, and uh, information and technology department is also there uh, which is being used to uh, provide us it support for the citizen engagement and as far as the slum upgradation cell and other rdd departments are also being engaged uh, for the thank you, Mr. Hello. thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you very much great sort of time uh, thank you very much you have very well explained how you have made citizen engagement by uh, choosing the four pillars uh, policy development like institutional, physical, social, political, will, and commitment. Uh, the uh, social place uh, from your area is uh, using for more engagement is excitement one, excitement one. And uh, technology intervention is uh, excellent. The QR code policy you have used uh, to get the feedback from the citizen is a, is a also a wonderful thing and is recommendable. Uh, this is the one of the best platform that from uh, where you can get the. Uh, grievances, whatever grievances are there of the citizen, you can easily uh, come up with that, those grievances and you can uh, take care of those grievances as you have said in a 24-7 time period. This is an excellent one. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, such a wonderful presentation. Uh, now, I would like to call uh, our second participant, Winford uh, from uh, Nairobi. Uh, she is a director of public communication. She is having an experience, a uh, 10 year experience experience in the field of development communication. She has a diploma in journalism and master of art in public relations and organization communication. Uh, she, uh, she is a strategic lead for Nervous City. Over to Winford. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Can you please allow me to share the screen? Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Welcome. As I do the presentation for Nairobi, I'm Winfred Katumo. I work in Nairobi County together with Beryl. Uh, Nairobi is in East Africa and uh, the population is about uh, 6 million. The challenge we are having as a city is uh, the growing population. And by 2050, we are expecting the population to have uh, doubled. So as a city, we need to see that we sustain the issue of uh, healthy food so that our people can be comfortable and get nutritious, uh, safe food. Uh, the outline of my presentation is about uh, citizen engagement. We have, uh, I'll touch about four pillars. Uh, that is food system strategy, capacity building forums, 
city support with their projects and partnerships. So these are basically the, the major ones uh, which we engage citizens when it comes to the issue of food in the city. Uh, recently, we developed a food system strategy. We have been developing for the Can last five years. And uh, it was approved last, last month. And the vision of the food system strat strategy is that we want to have affordable, accessible, nutritious, and safe food for all the Nairobi residents. So once we start implementing this strategy, Nairobi will be far much ahead in terms of food security. Objective of the food uh, system strategy is that uh, it is going to attain a consistent food security for the city residents while safeguarding the commercial interest of the food industry and entrepreneurs. And we have about four specific objectives. And uh, the strategy looks at attaining in increase in food production. We also want to have a stable food supply and incomes, reduction of food losses. And we also want to make sure that there, there is good welfare for the consumer, for the food consumers. We want to see how our consumers can be accessing uh, safe, nutritious food. Another one uh, uh, on uh, citizen engagement, we do it through capacity building forums. And in these forums, we, we conduct field days and exhibitions where we are able to reach out to the farmers in the city. And uh, there you can see an open field. And we also uh, promote value addition to make sure uh, the people are able to access food. And also, most of them also, they carry out farming as a business. So even as they get the nutritious food, they are able to get some income from the activities they are carrying out. Another one, uh, under capacity building, we, we, we do it uh, through trainings and demonstrations uh, to the farmers in the city. Once we train them, we demonstrate on how to make like, now this is yogurt making, to one of the groups. Again, they are able to, 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 to consume it and also to make some income out of it so that uh, their lives uh, get better. We also have uh, the issue of symbol drip irrigation uh, when we are training and demonstrating so that our people can engage themselves into, uh, into, into getting good food, clean food, uh, safe food, and also uh, you can see that is a, just a symbol which is using less water and uh, there's, there isn't much labor. Again, we have, uh, we conduct farm visits when we are engaging with the citizens in the city. And uh, as you can see, those are our staff visiting farmers in the city, just to capacity build them and see that whatever activities they are carrying out, they are able to do them in the best way uh, and uh, also get some income as well as uh, feed themselves and their families. Sorry. The number three, under engagement with the, with the, with the citizens, we, we, the, 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 the city supports uh, groups or institutions with projects. And uh, I've just given a few, some examples. Uh, we have been supporting uh, public institutions with the drip irrigation kits so that they are able to engage in vegetable production. And when they get these vegetables, they are able to feed the students or the pupils in the schools. Here is one of the primary school and also a secondary school in the city. And in total, we have about seven of them. Another one under, under the projects, we have also been promoting greenhouses in the city, again, in the institutions. This is another school. Uh, and uh, whatever they get from the greenhouses or from the farms, they are able to use it, uh, they, they are able to consume during the school feeding program, their school feeding programs, they, they, they supplement whatever food they have in the kitchen. We also promote fish farming in uh, using, uh, th these are some tanks, in, again, in our public school. And we carry out some campaigns. Again, you can see that the students down there, they have harvested. And we, we, we usually also train on uh, consumption campaigns. 
uh, where we teach them on how to, 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 to make them or to cook them for better nutrition in the schools. We have about 21 of them in uh, public institutions. We also promote fish farming in schools, especially where they have large land. Uh, we are able to excavate uh, fish ponds. This is one of the high schools in the city. And you can see them again harvesting so that it can supplement their nutrition in the kitchen. Uh, again, we do uh, engagement again through partnerships with uh, international organizations or local organizations. And this is one of uh, a recent project we undertook with the Turkish government in one of the schools. And you can see they are able to harvest tomatoes for their kitchen. Hydrophonics again with the World Food Program. They have, been, uh, they, they have supported another school and we also have a community farm in uh, one of the informal settlements. And those are vegetables which are being used, uh, like now the ones for the, uh, the Olympic High School. These vegetables are harvested uh, twice a week and uh, the school is able to support uh, 10, 10 vegetable vendors who are able to make some income of, out of it and also sell at a subsidized price to those informal settlement uh, people. The Victor's farm again is a demonstration farm uh, in uh, that informal settlement, uh, just to make sure that they gain the knowledge and also they have something which they can do every day to supplement their diets. We are also working with FAO and uh, currently they are supporting uh, uh, three informal settlements in the city with about 300 multi-story gardens. And uh, they're also supporting 12 farmers groups with the grants to expand on food production enterprises. So basically that is what we are doing. And again, under partnerships, I've just picked a few. Under partnerships or collaboration, we are also collaborating with the uh, local NGOs, local community-based organizations, faith-based organizations, the private sector, again, we are also collaborating with them while we are doing our daily extension work, just to make sure that our people in the city, they have access to healthy, uh, sustainable food. Uh, I did mention that uh, the city is producing about 20% of the food which has been consumed and 80% comes from the neighboring towns uh, of the city. And therefore the strategy which I talked about when I introduced the topic, the strategy is now going to engage all of these towns which are supplying us with food so that we can, we can have a sustainable food in the city. Thank you so much. Uh, great, Pinford. Uh, uh, thanks a lot. You have uh, uh, done a wonderful presentation. And uh, the way uh, the policy you have adopted and uh, the way you are supporting the uh, farmers, uh, uh, those who are into the agriculture practices or uh, those in the fish farming, it's an excellent one. And uh, the capacity building you are providing to them uh, is also a, a commendable one. Uh, so thanks a lot. Uh, once again, uh, it's a wonderful presentation. Now, next, uh, uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Uh, Anshul Gupta from City of Ujjain. Uh, sir is from the Indian Administrative Services, at present posted as a Commissioner, Municipal Corporation, Ujjain. And uh, he is also holding a charge of Executive Director, Ujjain Smart City Limited. Uh, sir is having an experience in the field of law enforcement under various acts, e-governance, and also in the field of health sector. He is having a track record of policy formation, uh, formulation and uh, under various projects and also worked in supply chain management leading a very uh, large team. Uh, so over to uh, Mr. Anshu Gupta. I would like to apologize from Ujjain uh, because tomorrow we have a uh, 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 CM's visit in our city. So uh, just because of that reason, sir is stuck somewhere. So he will join us in the later part of this presentation. So I would like to take this opportunity and uh, I'm basically Keshav Saxena, project in charge, looking after uh, uh, the intro. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Welcome, sir. 
Yeah, am I we are audible? So, uh, Anshul Gupta sir is there. So, uh, again, I would like to introduce uh, Anshul Gupta ji, and he is a uh, uh, he is from the Indian Administrative Services, uh, Indian Administrative Services, at present posted at Commissioner Municipal Corporation Ujjain, and also holding the charge of Executive Director Ujjain Smart City uh, Limited. He is an experience in the field of and you know, law enforcement under various acts, e governance, and the field of health sector also, and he is uh, having a good track record in the policy formulation under the various projects and also worked in the supply chain management leading a very large team. So, sir, welcome. Uh, please proceed with your presentation and uh, your, share your experiences. Thank you, sir. Thanks for uh, giving this opportunity to Jan Smart City. So, uh, how much time do we have? You are only having a 10 minutes time, eight, eight, eight minute time. So we will extend it okay. for one minute. So, as we know, Ujjain is one of the oldest living cities in the world. And uh, apart from our regular population of around uh, half a million, we also have uh, around uh, 100,000 people visiting us uh, almost daily to offer their uh, offerings to Lord Mahakal. And uh, when we have festivals, uh, this daily inflow actually increases to around half million to 2.5 million. So whatever do we do, like these pictures will give you an idea of what happens during festivals. And especially the top most picture is very interesting. Recently, we made a world record of uh, uh, lighting largest number of earthen lamps at a single place. We lighted uh, uh, 1.3 million uh, earthen lamps years and made a, made a Guinness Book world record. So like around 15 to 20,000 people assemble on the ghats of uh, Holy River Shepra and with these stars. Uh, so the, just a simple idea uh, to tell, uh, to like uh, share all this is that basically uh, we are a very unique city uh, with a fixed population and plus the large floating population, which varies in numbers as from time to time. Next, please. Yeah, this is how, you know, a uh, typical scene looks like around Mahakaleshwar Temple. Next, please. So the challenges uh, in the Eat Smart Challenge now when so we have crossed the first hurdle and now we are one of the 11 cities. Uh, who uh, who are uh, taking uh, who are participating in the challenge? So few challenges are like uh, are general, which every city faces, and few are specifics to us. So first of all, uh, it's very like the basic common minimum goal is availability of safe and healthy food. Since we are a religious city, so a very important thing for us is uh, temples and the religious food which is offered over there, and it is also consumed by a large number of people, and it al also has religious con connotation. So certain norms of uh, are to be followed by preparing it and how do you dispose it disposal of leftover food because we have a large floating population so they carry food items with themselves and they also consume food items over here and uh, cutting across all these three themes is the fourth theme which is awareness of adoption of safe and healthy food and once again sustainable serving of the food because now uh, the food whether it's a take-home food whether you take from hotels or whether you take from places outside your home the whole serving process involves use of lots of plastics and other materials. So how, how, how does the city deal with it? And of course, hygienic preparation of food. And because there is a demand supply gap, because now as, as we see, demand is huge. Uh, per capita nutrition, per capita consumption of food is increasing. Plus we have floating population, plus we have festivals. So demand of food is really big. And at times, because there is an economics behind it, so adulteration also happens. That is also one of the challenges uh, while one is uh, aspiring to be, you know, smart city for uh, yeah, as far as food is concerned. Next, please. So the vision which we have formulated for us uh, for next uh, uh, few months to a uh, uh, few months is uh, how, how, how do we do, how do we uh, make a direct, establish a connection between food system, economic growth, and how do we do participatory planning? So like even in the first phase, we looked, uh, looked at it that there is a need to involve schools and uh, our uh, crutches, which we call Anganwadis in uh, Madhya Pradesh in India, where children from the age of three to uh, seven are put. And uh, plus our eateries and hotels and uh, eateries are also like, you know, various kinds, big hotels, small hotels, restaurants, and food carts. How do we involve all these in doing a participatory planning and identify so healthy and uh, safe food hubs? Digitize the market taxes. Uh, India is a, India is a country which is having largest number of digital transactions more than US or China uh, after the demon, after the demonetization and digital India campaign. So how do we make sure that our food vendors are also uh, digital and they use less cash? Promotion of safe, hygienic, healthy, sustainable food. 
and how do we create a whole ecosystem a whole chain uh, because uh, it can't be achieved in parts we have to we have to attack we have to uh, address all the issues right from production to distribution to transmission to disposal and uh, as i mentioned earlier we have this 12 year uh, the huge religious gathering uh, called uh, sihast every 12 years so now we are having in 2028 so by all these measures uh, we believe that we'll be ready uh, in a better way uh, for the sihast as well so our strategy like uh, to translate this vision into reality we have formulated a strategy and key steps of the strategy are that uh, we are doing smart mandi so uh, one mandi we have already done we are identifying more mandis and we will convert them into smart mandi mandi is basically a uh, yard it's a wholesale market for agriculture produce where agriculture products from the town villages and small towns come and uh, traders uh, buy it from there so uh, there is a vegetable mandi for the grain and for fruit and vegetable as well then uh, identify various food hubs and convert them into clean food hubs Uh, uh one important part of participatory planning is how do we involve the civil society so there is a ngo called robin hood army and the other people as well so they have a very nice mechanism where uh, by peer to peer uh, calling networks and apps they reach out to people who have excess food and they also reach out to people who have uh, less food so they are doing a very yeoman job of uh, bridging the demand supply gap because otherwise that food gets spoiled uh, it is just it is you have to just destroy it so uh, basically any any grain of food which is produced in the city it should be used and not it should not end up in dustbin that is the idea uh, and similarly whatever even after all these efforts whatever food waste is there how do we recycle it so we are setting up uh, compost pits across the city in community compost pits we are setting up pits in the uh, all the gardens and public places and we are also promoting use of the compost pits uh, at the individual housing level which also gels well with our swachh bharat mission and uh, even the food serving there is a traditional indian uh, way of uh, serving food in uh, various kind of leaves it's like in south you do in banana leaves in north we also have a local tree called sal and we do it in uh, in uh, we made uh, you know plates and uh, bowls and even spoons out of those leaves and we serve food in that and we are also launching a campaign uh, like like in hindi we call it uh, done mein dona so dona is basically a, a bowl round shaped bowl made out of leaf and you can you know you can have light snacks and fritters and those kind of things in that and dona is like in hindi word like give so basically we are asking that give us food in the uh, that uh, eco friendly leaf plate and it's very catchy in hindi when you call it done mein dona so this kind of campaign we are launching and then uh, there is a sustainable approach so as i mentioned that when once you take out plastic of the equation how do we fulfill the gap so for that uh, we have women self help groups and uh, we have been able to distribute around 50000 uh, cloth bags uh, by this uh, women self help groups to the various shopkeepers and vendors and uh, jute bags also we are promoting as i mentioned earlier that uh, children are very important part and there is a issue of malnutrition in india and in madhya pradesh in particular so this small uh, crutches uh, which we call anganwadi which serve as a nutrition center pardon nutrition and as well as the health center for the children so uh, we are involving them uh, we are developing kitchen garden over there and we are also uh, ensuring that they have uh, good food and uh, we are generating uh, generating public awareness campaigns next please one important thing is licensing of the vendors because formalization of the vendors and bringing them in the formal net is important so this uh, uh, news uh, uh, scripts are in hindi but they basically say that what is the number of uh, food uh, vendors which we have registered and we have brought them under the uh, license and uh, samples continuous sampling of the food shops next please continuous sampling of the food items so that any adulteration is uh, caught uh, on time and uh, there is a enforcement thing and shopkeepers and various producers are aware that uh, they cannot uh, do mischief uh, or they can't sell sub standard products next please these are the certifications we have been able to achieve till now so our main temple we have it is uh, i think first temple in india to have the uh, blissful hygienic offering the bhog uh, certification various shops and hotels are also getting certification from fssi next please yeah next step we are targeting another uh, few more temples because we are city of temples and all these temples have huge footfall and huge number of people uh, taking prasad uh, which we call in common lingo which basically blessed food from god uh, every day and uh, apart from this religious places we are also going for the certification of restaurants bakeries and sweet shops 
changing food settings so uh, various formal settings like hostels and government bodies where uh, daily 50 to 100 to 500 people uh, take food those places also we are uh, trying to move them towards the uh, safe food process government schools because uh, we have a very large program where midday meal is offered uh, to children in government schools so we are trying to cover that as well and as i mentioned earlier uh, school teachers and anganwadi workers are in train uh, transport hubs uh, so railway stations schools government hospital government office canteens vegetable market we are converting into smart vegetable food market and we are developing uh, street food hubs as clean food hubs next please we have a very ambitious program where uh, we are expanding the mahakal temple zone at the cost of say around 700 crore rupees and uh, it's a huge project being funded by smart city as well as afd and uh, because it's a new development and huge number of shops are being developed so we are trying to uh, uh, ensure that this development is also in consonance with the eat uh, smart campaign and uh, uh, so we are ensuring that new businesses which come over here, they are hygiene rated, they are registered and certified, they are especially RUCO registered, and we have a full complete ban on single-use plastics in this area. And uh, vendor survey in this area is ongoing. So basically, existing vendors also we plan to migrate them to this new paradigm. Next, please. Yeah, the behavior change is very important because all these things are not possible if there is no behavior change. So one is like uh, by testing lab, as I mentioned earlier, we are collecting huge number of samples so that there is a huge enforcement drive going on uh, like almost every day. Then they are doing campaigning on uh, food fortification. So we have this clean food throughout the city and uh, we have various uh, social media platforms by which we are encouraging people, especially for children and uh, lactating mothers and uh, pregnant women to how to fortify the food. Uh, and similarly, uh, healthy food involves that you reduce uh, the intake of fat, salt, and sugar. So for this also, like RUCO campaign is also there. This also we are taking help of social media and various uh, advertising means. And uh, there is a campaign of Government of India also on Transfer Free India. Uh, so this also gels very well with uh, our Eat Smart campaign. Uh, these are just some of the news items like uh, enforcement, campaign, awareness. Next, please. Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, so we are launching uh, in a big way uh, this campaign where we are promoting usage of this uh, uh, leaf and eco-friendly uh, utensils for serving food. As you can see in the picture, uh, table, uh, plate and uh, ball and uh, spoons all are there. And we are calling it, as I mentioned earlier, Done Me Dona. So this plastic, uh, because we can't just simply ban plastic without giving alternative. So we are trying to give this alternative. And this alternative is eco-friendly, plus it will generate employment for uh, our women, uh, self-help group women. So that is how we plan to translate this whole Eat Smart campaign into reality. And like this just notification which we put for plastic bag, and these are the cloth bags which we have been distributing to various vendors. We are also uh, in the process of developing a mobile application, and I hope uh, by our next meeting, we have this application. This application will be focused on food. And so anybody who is visiting city will have an idea of uh, various food places, which are the uh, licensed food places in the city, food distributors, uh, you know, contact to NGOs. Uh, one minute, sir, please, uh, a little bit fast, one minute left. Right. And another thing which we are trying to do is kitchen garden because uh, healthy food is very important uh, that people uh, they are able to produce their own food and especially awareness has increased a lot after uh, COVID. So we are uh, trying to uh, promote kitchen garden uh, usage in, among the population. These are a few of the events which we have held, Eat Right Mela and Eat Right Competitions and basically uh, the whole gamut of activities uh, to inspire people to consume safe food, to produce food in safe way, to consume it in safe way and then dispose it also in a safe way with less uh, least possible ecological footprint. And uh, in our municipal, in our town area, we have identified an area uh, as a you know a pilot area, which we are trying. It, it will have 100% home composting at household level, dry waste collection and disposal, and uh, air quality monitoring and decibel meter. So basically, we will make one ward and uh, you know ideal ward, and then others will try to replicate it. Uh, similarly, in this uh, ideal ward, we'll develop an eat right colony, which will have 100% uh, home composting, dry waste collection, and common ruko container, so that uh, oil is not wasted. And uh, uh, local business is uh, encouraged 
and eat right education we are also promoting next please yeah so this is how uh, that's how uh, we are planning to uh, you know go ahead in future uh, uh, future weeks thank you great great answer gupta ji you have uh, very much explained the how you have taken uh, care of both the points one side uh, behavior change methodology by way of organizing various camps or various campaigns and uh, on another side uh, made people uh, to make healthy choices by benchmarking and certification retreats and that uh high rating schemes and other initiatives of fssa and uh, your uh, two main points were uh, excellent one one is that uh, you have made a, a comp uh, compose with uh, spits uh, on the various gardens and areas and uh, second one is the dhone dhone pe dhona uh, it's an a wonderful initiative you have taken and it's a wonderful campaign uh, to uh, stop the uh, use of uh, single use uh, plastic it's a wonderful one and it is a need of the r Uh, absolutely wonderful presentation from your side uh, so all the participants uh, uh, presenters explained very well the way uh, we can change the behavior and mindset and also how we can uh, encourage cities uh, to make healthier food choices so now uh, over to questioners uh, questions so who so ever has any question they may please raise their hands or uh, questions so that uh, answer can be given from the presenters We have a question from Rushika. Rushika, would you like to ask your question, or would you like me to read it from the chat? Do feel free to um, come online and 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 chat, or I can um, put it to our speaker. Okay, I'll go ahead and ask it on your behalf. So, Rushika, this is a question uh, for, from Rushika for for the team from you, Jane, um, about that Donna Madonna campaign. Um, she'd like to know how you mo how you're mobilizing small vendors to switch uh, to alternatives. um and and make them join that donna madonna campaign one is uh, uh, we are banning the use of plastic we have already banned it so anyone who find, who is found using single uh, single use plastic uh, with a thickness of less than certain micron he or she is penalized so a vendor has an option to either get penalized for using uh, not prescribed materials or has an option to shift to this eco friendly thing second thing is uh, this eco friendly leaf made uh, utensils there's a huge indian tradition of using this so like we have had plastics uh, utensils in our country only last 30 40 years before that uh, usage of uh, metal utensils wooden utensils and uh, as a disposal way this was very common but it was gradually given up so we already have vendors who manufacture and who sell this uh, thing third thing is the source material is local so uh, the cost of these uh, leaves made uh, uh, plates and utensils is very easy so these are few things which we are doing apart from uh, local uh, vendors as i mentioned around the temple we are doing a survey and uh, we are also connecting it with our religion and our culture so these are the few approaches by which we are uh, trying to integrate small vendors into this our done me donna campaign fantastic Can I think Oh, very well using the uh, help of this uh, women groups uh, to mobilize this uh, very uh, campaign right so basically uh, this uh, women groups uh, so there is a uh, there is a huge government of india program under which we mobilize a group of women uh, self help groups so 10 or more women can form a group they do some monthly savings and then they get a, a co financing grant from the banks as well as government and they have to uh, invest this money into income generating activities so these groups will also uh, be involved right now we are involving them in uh, making cloth bags but in addition to cloth bags we also plan to involve them into making jute bags plus uh, this uh, eco uh, eco friendly leaf made utensils so in that way we will address the supply issue of this uh, donas also so once there is a supply and there is a push there is a push that you know you have to use this otherwise you are penalized so it's a it's a approach where it's cheaper it's available and its usage is incentivized uh, that's that's uh, just the approach so there is one more question uh, from the chat uh, how are you encouraging citizens with a limited plot area to take up kitchen garden and home composting right uh, for this uh, right now we are targeting people uh, who have space on their terrace and also people who have space in their uh, you know uh, in their uh, parking or in their house but uh, people who actually don't have much area left in their houses for them we are targeting gardens so in every gardens uh, we are reserving space for uh, kitchen garden and our schools and our anganwadis 
they are also uh, they 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 there also we are distributing seeds and vegetable seeds etc for kitchen garden so of course there will be people who will have space those who have space we are giving them training we are giving them environment and seeds to do the kitchen garden and those who don't have space they will be involved with community one one way or other either by garden either by school nearby school or by nearby anganwadi or the crèche so uh over to forest uh, so this is all from my side uh, thanks i thanks the organizers and uh, so given me uh, the such a platform to share the uh, complete session uh, thanks to all the speakers and thanks to uh, those who have spent their precious time and attended this session uh, so i hand over to uh, florence for further proceedings Great. I, I'm, we've still got time for some more Q&A. I've actually got my hand up for a, a question. Um, so we don't need to wrap up just yet. We've um, got 10 minutes. If there's more questions, please do put them in the chat. I'll put your hand up. Um, but I have a question um, for uh, Dr. Knight, um, our first speaker from Surat. Uh, you talked about using social media um, to engage citizens. Um, I'd love to know um, what channels you put them out on and how you build a following on your social media. Is it from... Um, from your department and and how do you build a following so that you are reaching people with your social media campaigns uh we as uh, i said is basically uh, our isd department which is uh, looking after this uh, event and we have our own pr agency uh, so all the health related and the food safety related uh, uh, updates which we are updating with that agencies and uh, that uh, through ISD department, we are following uh, this entire protocol and uh, we have we entered into an agreement with these agencies to uh, get all the updates of the health and uh, food related issues uh, and they communicate through their different social medias. Great, thank you. I wonder if you, Jane, also, because um, I know you mentioned the use of social media as well, um, if you might be able to answer the same question, how you how you build a following and, and reach people through your social media channels. Okay. Pardon? I, can, I, I can't get it. Sorry, that was to, to, to you, Jane, if um, the same question to them um, okay. about using their social media channels. Thank you for your answer. That's great. Sorry, um, so social media. We okay. we have a, a social media presence uh, on Facebook, on Insta, and Twitter uh, by Smart, Gen Smart City and Gen Municipal Corporation. So various campaigns which we are running uh, will take med help of social media on that. And apart from social media, as I mentioned, we are also developing an app, uh, an app. So that mobile app will help us a lot. And uh, by number of its downloads and by number of its active users. And, uh, you know, uh, the bookings they made of our uh, food uh, places and they rate our various food places. That is one of the approach which we are uh, hoping to follow. Great, thank you. I have another question as well, but please do feel free to jump in if anyone else would like to ask a question. Uh, and this is for, for, for Winfred and Beryl in Nairobi. Um, you spoke about um, the partnerships that you have, um, such as with FAO. I was wondering how you establish those partnerships. Um, do you approach those bodies or, or do they approach you and uh, how, those, how those come about for cities that might be interested in doing similar? Yes, thank you so much. As I talked, we are doing a lot of work with the partners. Uh, those are the international partners and also the local ones. And uh, the FAO, we, we, we started working with them back in 2017. We had a project about uh, food systems with them. Uh, the project ended in 2018 and immediately we, 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 we again, uh, negotiated and uh, we began another project with them. A project began in 2019 and it is ending in December this year. So it's like uh, we are engaging each other and more so during the Milan Urban Food Policy Pact forums. That is when we are able to meet with the, most of the partners and uh, do some leakages. Uh, with the Turkish government, uh, they came through the a county assembly. And uh, so we were approached by the members of the county assembly who are in the agriculture committee. 
and we were able to put up about uh, uh, three greenhouses in three institutions. So it's like a continuous partnership with them. Thank you. Thank you. That's really, really interesting. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, Charlene, do you want to jump in at all and, and say, say hello? Yes, whilst everyone's online, um, thank you. That was an exciting session. Um, and I think it also gives me a few ideas for the summer meeting. Um, we'll probably be sending out more details about that at the end of this week or the beginning of next week. Um, but it would be great for you to start thinking, for those of you that are traveling to Birmingham, to think about um, what you can bring with you to um, show the work that you're doing. So for example, I just put in the chat that samples of those um, <clears throat> non-plastic containers might be quite nice to show. We're going to try and create some exhibition space um, to feature the city profiles, but hopefully there'll be an opportunity for you to actually be around that exhibition space if cities and other delegates want to um, find out more about your work. Um, the other thing, this is just about the next session. The next session is tackling food insecurity. And um, Nairobi, Johannesburg, and Noah Para are due to speak. Um, I, there's also a fourth space if anybody wants to speak, and I'll speak to um, Ruchka tomorrow, but if there's an Indian city that would like to speak um, about any interventions where you really look at those people that are struggling to eat, struggling to access food. If you've got some great examples that you can share with the group, um, that's wonderful. And that's taking place on, um, you'll be welcome to speak rather than that's wonderful. We'd love to hear more about it. So um, please let us know. And that will be taking place on the 8th of June. And um, Ruchika also reminded me that we want to do a final session which is um, linking food safety to climate change and um, at the food nutrition work that we're doing. So how do we integrate both policies? Um, and so because we're running out of time because it will be the meeting by the time we get through the rest of the sessions, we might do two sessions in one week or do um, two sessions following one another. So we'll, we'll discuss the date for that tomorrow. Um, but that's all from my side. Thank you once again for joining us. And to Mr. Singh, you are a fantastic chair. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. And thank you to the speakers. You are all great, really incredible work. So um, yeah, we shall see you all soon. Take good care. Thank you, everyone. And I'll share Charlene, the I, I'm so sorry. I, I, you know, I had, uh, I am so sorry, you know. I mean, I, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. emailed you, Charlene, you know. Um, my, my request was, you know, we need to take a feedback from the other uh, members, you know, from other countries. You know, we never take a feedback. Like, for instance, I feel, uh, suppose the presentations was made by the Indian cities. So I just wanted, you know, other people to, you know, just give a feedback. Did they actually understand what is it that these cities are doing? Because sometimes, you know, when we start talking, we use a very, very... Uh, uh, very, very, what do you say, regional terms. I mean, terms we will be using, say, in India, talking about programs which are very specific. And maybe an international audience does not understand them. So I just thought maybe once we have this, we can also have a feedback. You know, okay. did people really understand or would they like, you know, maybe some things to be changed? Maybe a person was speaking too soon. Uh, I mean, too fast. Maybe they can go. Some sort of feedback should be there. It is not just you make a presentation. I mean, that was just... You might thought. Yeah, and actually we do have 30 minutes extra for in-depth discussion. And I think that maybe because we're starting off and people are getting into the rhythm of it, but what I'm hoping is that eventually there will be more discussion. But I mean, we could even ask Winfred what, whether, what she, whether she was able to understand the Indian cities and whether there was too much jargon or terms that she couldn't understand so what what, what would you say Winfred? It was okay the presentations were okay and uh, I've liked what is happening to other cities and as I said this is one way of uh, get, getting linkages and uh, 
creating that partnership with other people. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting most of you in July uh, so that we can establish these linkages and also see how we can have a city to city exchange. Mm -hmm. And uh, to see about uh, like India, I've seen there's a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of activities on uh, food wastes. And uh, I think everywhere in the world, we are, we, we are really concerned about uh, the, 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 the large amounts of foods which are being uh, wasted. And this is food which can be saved even before it goes into the dusty bin and brought back to the food chain. So I've seen uh, somewhere I can go for, for information sourcing, but uh, uh, the, the presentations are good, clear, and uh, we have learned a lot. I've learned a lot. Okay, that's that's good to hear. And um, I mean, even myself, I was thinking it would be really good to dig deeper and have more dialogue about you know, for us, the big concern is that whatever work we do, um, the food system is changing at such a fast pace that even when we're working at this scale, our food policy actions are going to be drowned out by the bigger systemic changes. Or the fact, for example, in this country, fast food or junk food is so readily accessible that it's a real struggle, even when we come up with imaginative ideas, solutions, programs, it's a real struggle. And even last week, uh, we had protests at Downing Street because the government, um, England is now one of the most obese, West, it is the most obese Western European um, countries. It's fourth in Europe after Malta, there were two others, they, they've even put Israel now in Europe. So Israel's pretty high and one other. And, um, but the government has done a U-turn on the strategy, the obesity strategy. And it's really challenging for us then to start making sense of implementing some of these changes. So eventually I think we'll start having discussions about, well, how do we encourage lower income groups or, um, you know, people with diabetes or people who are or moving into slums and being exposed to such high volumes of fast food now, how can we really support them to make better food choices? And it's not easy. So, but I think that um, in Oshi that hopefully we'll get to those discussions. And that's the whole point of the meeting is that everyone we've met through this partnership is incredibly skilled, very intelligent, and so those are the discussions that we'll move towards. Um, so I think we're just at the early stages now where we're getting to, to know one another. And um, hopefully we can have those discussions when we meet and then as we continue, obviously. So, but thank you for coming on screen then. <laughs> No, I've been, you know, hearing all of these and I actually haven't, you know, commented because I just thought, you know, this is one area where, you know, let's just see if there's some sort of feedback, but because it wasn't coming, I just thought, okay, if we could just have five minutes and just, you know, discuss, but thank you so much, Winfred, it, I think, motivated everybody back home. So thank you. And Monica, did you want to, Monica's online as well from Windhoek in Namibia, did you want to say anything? Uh, Shalene, good morning and good morning, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, it's a public holiday in Namibia, but I, at least I have managed to follow the, the, the discussion. Everything was very fruitful and we have learned a lot. So from my side, I have nothing to say, but at least I have enjoyed the presentation. And, and I also appreciate if we can also receive it, the PowerPoint presentation, maybe via email, and then we can always just go back and see what we can also take out of the presentation. Fantastic. That's yes. great. Mm. No problem at all. Just to add, the last uh, session and presentations um, went up on the learning platform um, and these ones as well as well. So I'll make sure that that link um, is resent again in the email. So everything will be coming to you again. Thank okay. you. Okay, then. So there is Beryl as well online. Did you have any feedback? Beryl? No, and Akram from Noapara. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we... Sorry, Beryl, go ahead. Sorry.
Oh, you're a little bit broken. Sorry, my network is a bit uh, crazy. Yeah, go ahead. Ben. Yeah, we can hear you. I think the, the presentations have been extremely informative. And like you said, yeah, it's a good opportunity to also learn about what other cities are doing and putting in place with regards to food systems and food security. So I guess by the time we come down to, um, you know, featuring all most of the cities, then I hope that we will have a session uh, whereby people can now interact freely. Yeah, sure. All the cities, not uh, not as in session by session, but now we're a session that will bring together all of us. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we do just, have, before, just before we're just more than before the in person. Yeah. yeah. If you want to meet any of the cities or like be introduced to any of the cities, you're all welcome. You, we aren't. We, we, you don't need to communicate through us. You can communicate directly as okay. well. Okay, no problem. Great. Okay, and then we've got Shuda, who's just raised her. Oh, there you are. Your name. Oh, hi, Shalin. Yes, uh, I, I, I just edited uh, several times my name because it was my nickname. And uh, for the network problem, I, there's like storm and rain in our uh, country today so mm -hmm. that's why the network is like uh, fluctuating so much and that's the reason maybe the Noapara and Mongla participants are not uh, like all the things you have uh, shared they are maybe not able to connect with all of them so I would request um, uh, the country's representative to share the their uh, their presentation or at least the uh, at least some points uh, of this meeting uh, with us uh, and it, yes as I was uh, present in all of the presentation time so they are very informative and we are very uh, like interested uh, to know about the how the other municipalities are coping up with the problems that are similar to us so that is very inf uh, all of the presentation were very informative and, and I would uh, congratulate all of the presenters here to share uh, so smoothly and elaborately Thank you so much, uh, India, and I guess the Nairobi participants. So thank you so much for uh, showing what you are doing and how you are going with the municipality and all of the other issues. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's great, a great ending, I would say. And um, yes, let's have more dialogue next time and you're more than welcome to communicate with one another. Um, so, um, I think, shall we leave it there? Has anyone else got any anything they'd like to say? Okay, great. We'll be in touch, um, obviously, with the links to the presentations. I'm also going to share the citizen engagement report that Pune produced, so you can see how they carried out a food survey and what the policy recommendations were by their citizens for how to support them. And then um, we'll be in touch about the summer meeting too. So have a wonderful day and we look forward to seeing you all again. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.